Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. It's been a very interesting month for them after uh, they, they did knock off Duke. Some, some tough L's, some close wins. Another one tonight, Rob, as a 15-point favorite. Uh, just hold on, despite Miami being down a couple of guys, 75 to 71. Of course, the story in this one, R.J. Davis. 42 points per ESPN stats and info. That is tied for the most points in North Carolina history uh, in the last 50 seasons, I believe, with Shaman Williams, who did it in 1998. Uh, so a huge night. There's the graphic there. You see it. I mean, you got to go way back. I mean, you're talking 60s and 70s uh, before you talk about people that did a better job than R.J. Davis did tonight of scoring the ball. Um, let's start with the team win, though. Uh, Rob, what have you made of North Carolina? No other player scored in double figures for them. So these games have been tight. These games have been have been very interesting for them over the last few weeks. What do you make of the Tar Heels right now? Well, the the biggest concern that I have is the way that they close this thing out. I think that Miami went on a was it a twelve zero run in a two minute stretch to to turn what was a fifteen point blowout into a game that uh, that ended up coming going down to one possession, and then they missed five straight free throws. Uh, with a chance to take a two possession lead um, in the final, it was like final 12 seconds or something like that. So uh, they kind of made this thing a lot more interesting than it needed to be. They played well enough to cover. Um, I wasn't complaining. I was on the under, so that uh, that worked out pretty well for me. But um, with North Carolina, I always come back to the fact that I don't know that I fully trust what they are on the defensive end of the floor. If we're talking about them making a run to a national title, right? Um I love what they are with Elliot Cadeau and R.J. Davis in the backcourt. I think the fact that R.J. Davis has been allowed to be uh, the guy offensively and not have to worry about being the point guard, not have to worry about facilitating, not have to worry about doing anything other than what he did tonight, and that's going and getting wow. buckets. Um, I think that's worked out really, really well for them. Obviously, Harrison Ingram has been a fantastic addition. He looks like the guy that was a McDonald's All-American back in 2021. Cormac Ryan's done good things, even though he didn't really shoot the ball well tonight, and Armando is Armando. I, I just I, – I think that what makes North Carolina so dangerous, Sweeney, is that – you know in the back of your mind there is always the potential for R.J. Davis to do what he did tonight. And outside of him, they didn't really play all that well. They get 33 points and uh, 13 for 39 shooting for guys not named R.J. tonight. Um, and they still found a way to win uh, relatively. It got a little close on the stretch, but it was a relatively comfortable win uh, that should have probably been a double-digit win. Uh, when they are at their best, this is a really damn good basketball team. Yeah, look, I think the way I would, would put it with North Carolina, and this is something that Harris Ingram said to me when I was down there um, in January, like their role allocation is outstanding. Like everybody understands who they are on this team. And that starts with R.J. Davis, right? Like they trust R.J. Davis to go create shots in big big moments of games, right? There is no question of are we posting it to Baycott? Is there another guy who's going to create it, right? Like they want the ball in RJ's hands. They can clear out. He can go get one. I thought, if anything, their offense bogged down today in those final possessions when Miami made that run because they went into such stall mode and Miami just blitzed them and you know, forced it out of his hands and no one else really knew what to do. But I think for the most part, it's been a strength of their team all year is that they just have guys who are bought into their roles. Today, it felt like everyone outside of RJ didn't play particularly well. Obviously, Ingram and, and Ryan, I think, were a combined two for two for 14 from three, I want to say. Uh, that's not a way to win most games, but when you have R.J. Davis and you can have a special performance like that, that's the that's the recipe to to be able to win you know six in a row in March. And so, look, I didn't think it was a great performance from Carolina today against the Miami team that was very undermanned, but it was enough to win and you know a, a reminder of just how good R.J. Davis is. Yeah, and, and in February and late February, when everybody's sort of especially a team like Carolina at this point, they're just sort of looking to the NCAA tournament, there, there is something to be said for just finding ways to not lose games. Lots of teams are, are losing games as we sort of stumble to the end here, and, and they are finding ways to win most of them. So there's there's value in that. Rob, <clears throat> just to follow up discussion here on RJ, because, I mean, it was an efficient 42. I mean, it was 14 of 22 from the field, as you see there. Uh, it does feel like player of the year is, is just wrapped up, like that's a foregone conclusion with the ED there. But sort of where does the discussion – of of RJ in the in the echelon of great college players start. I think it's a very easy argument to make that he needs to be a first team All American guard. 
right? I, I think that there's, I mean, you look at Tristan Newton, you look at Tyler Kolek, you look at um, some of these other guys around the country. There's a lot of really good guard play in college basketball this season. But for me, if I was picking a team right now, I think Jamal Shedd and R.J. Davis would be the two guys that I would have as my uh, starting backcourt when it comes to first-team All-Americans. And um, a lot of that is just because of – how efficient he can be when he is scoring the ball like this. I mean, look, you go 14 for 22 and 7 11 from three, right? Like that's that's not an easy thing to do. And I know Miami doesn't really play all that much defense and and um that's kind of who they are, but I, I just I think the fact that he has been allowed to be unleashed here, I, you know, you watch this and it kind of makes me wonder what would have happened in the last couple of years in North Carolina if that backcourt was better suited to playing together, right? You see Caleb Love this year having an All-American caliber season. You see R.J. Davis this year having an All-American yep. caliber season. And last season, they were in the same backcourt playing together with Armando Baycott at the five, and they weren't able to get to the NCAA tournament. And I think that, one, kind of tells you how bad things got between them, but it's also just it, it drives home this idea that the, the fit has to be there. Right. It doesn't matter how many how much talent you put together. It's not like we're playing a video game here. This isn't uh, NCAA basketball 2025 where you just kind of put players on a court and you figure it out and you go play. Right. The pieces have to fit. The personalities have to fit. The talents have to fit. And R.J. Davis next to L.A. Cadeau, who doesn't want to do anything but pass. Right. Like his whole the whole knock on him is he can't really shoot. He don't want to do anything right. but pass. R.J. Davis doesn't want to do anything but shoot. You put them together and it's a great fit. Caleb Love is out there with a guy in Kyle Boswell who seems like he's scared to shoot, right? And you put him next to him, and all of a sudden you got to do that. All he wants to do is shoot. It works. It fits. And I think that this is seeing what those two kids are doing this season, seeing the way that their teams are having success this season, and seeing what they were last year when they were forced to try to survive together in the same backcourt. Personalities fit, man. Like all of that stuff matters so much, and I don't think we really give it enough consideration We were when we are uh, kind of projecting some of these teams out. That's why it works, baby. That's why it works. I mean, you can't you can't be an extrovert and marry an extrovert. You know what I mean? It's like that's gonna be that's that's a divorce way. I mean, you know what I mean? Like you have to have a little bit of balance in your life, Rob. So yeah, I mean, you can't put Caleb Love with a with a <laughs> with somebody that you know doesn't hey, enjoy. Hey, passion, John, man. John. Every single every single marriage has one person that does the dishes as soon as that dish is dirty and one person that leaves it in the sink to soak because you got to make sure that the dishes soak before you properly clean them, right? Every marriage yeah. has to have that combination. And every yeah. backcourt has to have a guy that wants to pass and a guy that wants That's to right. shoot. It just makes That's sense. Right. Yeah, you, you know, you, you have to have a little bit of, uh, of a balance there. Thank you for watching The Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field 68 content.